Welcome to the Coach's Cup. I am Sonia Green from Sonia Green Coaching. And I am Coach Judith Bender, one of the amazing coaches with the No BS Weight Loss Program. Today, we are going to talk about fearing our feelings, specifically <laughs> our negative feelings. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I, I guess it's possible to fear positive feelings, but usually it's the negative ones that we're fearing, right? Well, you know, I think it, I think we could probably classify if I thought about this, it is fearing big emotions. Yes. Right? And Excellent. that could be like a joyful feeling or that, that overwhelming feeling when, when a feeling feels big, because we've all yes. experienced the big feelings. And I think it is the negative ones that we might be uh, like you and I, when we were pregame culturally more, um, programmed to fear yeah so when we have them we don't know what to do with them because we've never been taught how to feel our negative feelings and the bigger the air quotes I'm air quoting the bigger feelings yeah no that's that's a great that's a great way to say that because even as I said it I knew in my mind we do fear some and some positive emotions but yeah it's the size of them those big emotions we don't know what to do with them both and, positive and negative negative. and then there's that also that fear of like when people it's common when they're they're afraid to feel joy because then they wait on that the other shoe to drop yes believe in that something new which is all just part of our brain trying to keep us safe and in, in balance and you know don't get too don't get too comfortable yeah no, and I, I spent a lot of my life that way. In fact, I still have to watch for that one mm -hmm. because if I start feeling really happy, really joyful about something, it's like there's something in the back of my brain. Ah, uh, don't get too happy. Don't get too satisfied. You're going to, you know, you're going to bring something on. <laughs> you're going to jinx it. That's, that's the term. You're going to jinx it. <laughs> And that waiting for the other shoe to drop. I can't tell you how many times I, I don't hear that in myself anymore. I think it's from all mm -hmm. the, all the coaching, but that's just something that's just when coaching clients and that, that comes up very often. Yeah. Interesting. And that is cultural. I, I have seen, I, I want to say just in the last week, I was reading a study about how we're learning so much about feelings and how they differ from culture to culture mm -hmm. just in the way we name them mm -hmm. and I know Brene Brown has talked about this because she wouldn't even allow um Atlas of the Heart she wouldn't allow that book to be translated mm -hmm. because it was so because it's culturally bound she said you know we talk about shame the American version of shame or the English version of shame in other countries, there are different words. There may be more like they may take shame apart into different pieces, or they may combine shame with embarrassment or, you know, some other words. And so it has, it has less of a, right. Um, what's the word I'm I looking know, for? Nuance. Nuance. Yeah. 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 Um, which is interesting. Didn't we talk somewhere? There is one word, one feeling that one culture does not have. And now for this. Yes, for life, we have talked about that before, but I don't that. remember what, what it is. That? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here's the pop quiz. Whoever can go mm -hmm. to the Facebook group who has listened to that podcast, please drop us a note. Tell us what podcast that was. In. And you know what? We have a mug hanging around. <laughs> if you'll tell us that and pop it onto the Facebook page, the Coaches Cup Podcast Facebook page, I will send you that mug. Honey, love it. Yeah, yeah. that's that's hilarious. My brain yes, is we hilarious. have talked about it. All right. Hmm. Yeah. All right. So it it is our first instinct in this culture, in our culture, um, to push down those negative feelings, mm -hmm. especially because of, because of fear, because of uncertainty, because our mm -hmm. brains want to keep us safe. Mm -hmm. 
But there is also a lot of science out there that proving all the different ways that pushing those down is bad for us. Well, I think we're seeing that. Like we don't, we, yes. we don't have to be like the research. <laughs> like That's a great point. <laughs> we're wearing it. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. You're right. You know, with, you know, alcohol, uh, food, gambling, porn, Netflix, you name it. Like we're yeah. all... Um, because why we do anything, right, is to create a feeling, avoid a feeling, or resist mm-hmm. feeling. <laughs> and yeah. so, what mm-hmm. the the value, in like an understanding, is that by not sharing your feelings, by not being off, you're not being authentic when you're not truly feeling your feelings, and that it's not helping you build that authentic pathway with yourself or in the relationship, your ships that you are in, you're not building that intimacy level. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have, I have a a feelings wheel on above kind of that I can look up at when I'm, when I'm coaching and it has, you know, the positive feelings on one side and they're broken down into different parts. And the other half is the the negative feelings. And it says on the negative side, these are the feelings you have when your needs aren't being met. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so we, I think a lot of it is we don't like to admit our needs aren't being met. Well, again, I mean, the women and those culturalized and socialized as yes. women, we are indoctrinated, right? With taking care of others first and our needs coming second. And I'm sure I'm leaving out tons of other groups, but I'm going to speak for, from, from being female. Yeah. Right. How I was raised. Yeah. Yeah. Female Southern, but I, I mean, I don't think it's just Southern women, but I think we, when you talk about cultural groups, I think there's an, another layer there. Mm-hmm. That yeah. generational, um, what do we call that? You know, I know there's a word for it, but that generation, Trauma. <laughs> right? Uh, that cu- culturalized generational culture. Yeah. Southern culture. Yeah. We've been talking a lot lately about normalizing things mm-hmm. and, and the need to start normalizing things, normalizing the fact that we all have anger we all have sadness, mm-hmm. you know, the, I, we all have shame. Mm-hmm. Normalizing that can really take the power away from those feelings. Mm-hmm. In our lives. Right. And opening up that um, opportunity again for dialoguing with someone else to increase connection to it, it's, it's why we have relationships. I mean, you're not in a relationship with someone because you want to, I don't even know, like we do it for the feelings to share mm-hmm. our lives with. I mean, and we are, we are emotional beings. Let me quote um, Joe Dispenza, emotional beings that sometimes think. Yeah. Right. So the emotions are, are messengers of what we are thinking and feeling. So. Yeah. I, and you know, at times, thinking about pushing our feelings down we will go so far especially in unhealthy relationships to cause somebody else pain rather than to feel it for ourselves Mm -hmm. and I think back to being children and you know somebody and I'm air quoting here hurts your feelings Mm -hmm. hurt my feelings yeah the things they say often they're doing to protect themselves right Mm -hmm. and we do it as children but some people in growing up they don't leave that habit behind they they continue to do that so I like to when when I'm coaching clients who are dealing with somebody who's hurting them Mm. you know I like to bring up that fact that what is what is the negativity that they're feeling and and you don't know i mean my guess is even if you think you know what it is you probably it it's not safe to figure out try to guess what other people's feelings are but what you can know for sure 
is that they're trying to avoid some kind of negative feeling, which helps me at least to develop some compassion for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To know that I don't have to answer that anger or that, you know, whatever they're trying to push on me. I read, um, I think in the no BS Facebook page, somebody was talking about how they had planned for ice cream and they were eating the ice cream and, and some kid drove by and yelled out something inappropriate. And, you know, thinking about, yeah, it's just some little punk, but what are they trying to avoid? What negative feeling are they trying to avoid in that moment of calling out to a stranger and saying something that's something that they're they're trying to get rid of their own suffering in that moment i am getting ready to go way off topic here but on topic go for it Went to see um where the crawdad scene uh -huh. and oh my gosh run don't walk to go see it that's my thoughts well i haven't read it yet and mm. so i want to read it first <laughs> um to just lightly touch on this. This is a similar topic. You know, she grows up in the marsh of North Carolina and they mention Asheville in the book many, many times. So I, I had no idea. Anyway, huh. it's, it is a, how they perceive her and how they label her mm -hmm. as the marsh girl. And it ends up, there ends up being a court, a trial. Mm -hmm. And that is the challenging question at the end of, if she, she says to her attorney, this is not about me. This is about them looking within themselves, mm -hmm. and being accountable basically for who they are and the story they've been telling themselves about me. This yeah. I'm totally paraphrasing, but to that, to your point on the, um, shouting out the pig thing. I mean, they shouted out to her. It was not a good thing when they called her yeah. Marsh girl. Yeah. Yeah. It, it happens. Um, I, I mean, because that is what happens when we spend our lives trying to push down the negative emotions instead of feelings, they're, they're gonna Instead of feeling them, they're going to come out. Mm -hmm. They don't just dissipate. You know, we have this idea. If I can just push it down, it goes away. It doesn't. No, it comes out somewhere. Yeah. Even in the form of hurting other people. I mean, we think about it like gas. There's more room on the outside than on the inside. Yeah. <laughs> I'll never yeah. forget the first time I heard that when my daughter was little. <laughs> else said it. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> genius. It's true. It's very true. So why would we, you know, denying ourselves our human experience, right? Back to the 50, 50. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And normalizing it, I think is a, is one way to get to that point where we, it's okay to mm -hmm. feel sad. It's okay to feel ashamed. Mm -hmm. It's okay to feel afraid. It's, it's actually healthy. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's not weak, right? Cause that, again, that's part of what we're culturalized to believe that we're weak with those assumptions that are put upon us that in fact, if feeling your feelings is a skill. Mm -hmm. And it gets better the more you practice. And I've got a Brene Brown quote I targeted over here that says, attend the fears and feelings, or we just keep managing the problematic behaviors. Yes. Oh, I love that. And when you think about, which is how we rolled into the show, mm -hmm. right? How it manifests itself in, in the problems with not feeling your feelings is it yes. comes out in behaviors that you don't want that have the behavior will have the negative effect. Yes. Feeling it's the behavior yeah, or the lack of. And the feeling, you know, yeah. Okay. It doesn't feel good, right? That's if it's a negative emotion, obviously it's not going to feel good, but suppressing it, pushing it down, whatever you want to call that is much more painful in the long run yeah. than acknowledging it, mm -hmm. than lifting it. Um, and you know, this is something talk about culture. We always talk about women, but this is where I think our men get shortchanged oh. in our society. Yeah. 
Yeah, did but, we talk about that on the podcast too, didn't we? At, yeah. at some point, I think we did mention that. <laughs> We've yeah. only been talking for two years now. <laughs> We've talked about a lot of things, a lot of things. But we, you know, women, I, I still, I don't like to appear weak. You know, that's, I won't, that's not an issue that I worry about right oh. now. But that was something that was, you know, in me growing mm-hmm. up, you don't show weakness. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is for, for, for boys, for men, that's, it's twice as much because we are allowed to cry. We mm-hmm. are, you know, that's, they may, they may put, um, they may call us names, but we're still, you know, it's a girl thing. Mm-hmm. As a mama, well, both of us mamas to boys here. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I didn't have this work five years ago and even every year since learning thought work and even as being a psychology major, it's so, it just blows my mind how we can learn this stuff. We can intellectualize on it. We could sit here and talk about it for years, mm-hmm. but that slowing down and actually experiencing the felt sensation in the body of a feeling is, is just a feeling. Yeah. Well, let's, let's talk just for just a minute as we're winding down the podcast, you know, we're talking about not fearing the feelings, but let's take just a couple of minutes again, in case somebody hasn't heard us say this before and talk about how do you experience a feeling? All right. You get on your lazy, get in your lazy boy. <laughs> I could, I can, you literally can just sit wherever you are, whatever you're doing. You can feel a feeling driving your car. You can feel a feeling while you're working at your desk. Mm-hmm. You notice what's going on. What vibrations am I feeling in my body? I, this, and this is the now process that, that Corinne teaches, right? opening up to the feeling. I literally tell my clients to think of turning your body towards the feeling. Yeah. To to look at it, go towards it versus trying to sideways it or run from it. Let's just stop and let's just go. Let's just look at it. And and you know, Hey, I see you're here. What are you here to tell me? Mm -hmm. And I'm opening up to it. I love that question. What are you here to tell me? Because that's something I've, I've noticed. I have gotten better about feeling the negative feelings, but I still sometimes I'm like, okay, so why, why are you here? What are you here to tell me? I love that question. Um, because I think that's where I am in this process. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I can go, oh yeah, that's what you're here to tell me. And sometimes I'm like, you know, I'm I'm not really sure. Mm -hmm. I may have to think about this a little longer. And I I think that's really good awareness. And the more you practice and the more you you're layering in, and that's where you develop that deeper understanding of where you learned these feelings, Mm -hmm. where you up how you've been carrying it through your life for the last 30 40 50 years whatever it may be that if we don't question there's the accepting of the feeling and then if you want to get curious and understand it if it keeps reoccurring or you notice your go-to then we want to you know what are you here to tell me and then the the final stage is is witnessing Mm -hmm. right when we say witnessing that's where you're you're zooming out You've got that bird's eye view, I I like to say, and you're witnessing as if what is going on? What am I feeling in my body? What is the felt sensation? And I like to think about that as narrating it, what you're calling witnessing. I, I narrate. I'm like, okay, where is it in my body? It's in my chest. It feels heavy or it feels like it's moving. And it's moving from my chest down to my stomach and I will actually narrate it. Mm -hmm. Did you see my coaching call from Friday night? No, I have not. I did a call. um, It was Friday night. I was like, wait a minute. Was that Thursday? It was Friday. No, it was Friday. Yeah. Yeah. So the first, the first lady I coached, 
I, I processed an emotion with her mm -hmm. and it was super powerful. If, um, and I think it's, it's, it can be that simple. Yes. If anyone wanted to like, see it like live in real time. Yeah. Just like, um, and it's the body scan and then going to where you feel the most. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, you, it is, it's simple, but powerful. Mm -hmm. And you don't, you can have a coach help you through it. In fact, for some people, especially if you've had years and years and years of never dealing with your feelings, then it's very helpful to have a coach help you through processing it, but it's something you can also do on your own. Mm -hmm. And I, I was going to say as, as a follow through something we don't often think about is realizing when you've carried emotion so long and how it is stored in your body. Mm -hmm. So this particular member um, wrote back in to ask coaches the next day. I don't think mm -hmm. I've told you this. She said, um, you know, and it was just so kind of her uh, thanking for the coaching, thanking, thanking me for the coaching and and when you watch the call, we process, she has pain that's in her shoulders, mm -hmm. go to her shoulders and process there. And she wrote back in to say that she had no pain and she was so grateful. So she was saying that she had been in such pain, yeah. she had been carrying that emotion in her shoulders. And, um, that just, that just meant a lot to, yeah. to realize that, you know, as coaches, we have that ability uh, to hold that space for a client and help them process through what they're experiencing and that people would be willing to get on, to get coached. It's, it never ceases to amaze me. No. I, and we talk about the power of, of processing the emotion, you know, but, but that is the real power. I mean, I, that's something that I have, I think even just in the last year really noticed is that when I have a pain at some point, especially shoulders, neck, arms, hips, mm -hmm. when yep. I have a pain somewhere in that area, it is probably because I am tensing that part of my body. And why am I tensing that part of my body? It's not just, yeah, exactly. It's not just because I'm sitting in a strain. It's because of something in my brain. And I did not mean to rhyme those. <laughs> <laughs> so that on a pillow, uh, but it's, it's because of something going on in my head. Mm -hmm. And I have started to be able to tie those moments together and really feel the intensity because that's the other thing that I do um, is I push down pain and don't feel it. Um, I am, I am, I have a high pain tolerance, which has caused me more problems in my life than good because I, yeah. I'll put things off, but I feel it and I can connect it, which gives me the power to let it go. Mm. Mm -hmm. that's I uh, the experience with my hip pain mm -hmm. it, all that I went through all the physical therapy all that fascia release is now my telltale to me yes. when I'm coaching or when I'm sitting at my desk or I'm driving my car mm -hmm. because I am I am so dialed into that one space when I feel the tension I'm like ooh. You know, it's like my stop, drop and roll. Like, what are you thinking? You go, oh no, slow down. Like, no, Judith, because we're not going down that road again. Yeah. That was a painful road to be on. Yeah. And, and it's our brains that cause this physical pain mm -hmm. because we don't want to feel a negative feeling. We're causing ourselves pain because we don't want to feel something that's, here's the thing, like our that's painful. <laughs> I never knew until I sit here eight hours a day, how much thinking not only does my brain do, but coaching oh, no. people, like we are some thinking machines, although it does get better. Yeah. You get better. I, I think meditation. Yes, is, absolutely. Is so helpful because I can, I can, I'm, I can notice times where like, I'm not thinking a lot, but like yesterday was, yesterday was not one of those days. Yeah. <laughs> It goes, it's cyclical, right? Yeah. Depends on what's going I on. Lots yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> what feelings? Such is life. 
<laughs> All right. Anything else you want to add before we go? Over these notes here, just to make sure that if you're with if you're with someone who is um, sharing their feelings, remember, like this is about your personal experience, but being mindful when you are in the presence of someone else with family member, um, friends, employees, strangers at the checkout line. I think we've talked about that too. <laughs> is um, sometimes like I was at the shoe store one time and this lady gave me her whole life story. She just needed somebody to listen to her. Yeah. And that's what I wanted. I've had that happen before too. I, have, I um that's the what I wanted to offer is to make sure that you can just listen to people and you don't have to fix them. Exactly. That's because that's for me. I used to think, oh my goodness, there. And I, I've I know I've said this before because when when my husband would tell me something, I would be like, oh, I've got to fix that. How am I going to fix that? I don't have to fix it. All I have to do is be a willing vessel listening mm -hmm. so many people need that 100 mm percent. -hmm. yeah yeah that's great all right if you are looking for coaching you can find me at sonyagreencoaching.com and i would love to coach you through your emotions through um any of this work that you're working on you can also find me at Sonia, S-O-N-Y-A underscore green coaching on Instagram. And you can find me at losing 100. Um, no BS. And on the Instagram, just Judy. <laughs> pausing, always pausing. I know that's what I, I was struggling through it today too. Me off the mob, like who am I? J-U-S-T, J-U-D-I-E. There you go. And um, yeah, I'll coach you on. <laughs> I'll coach you, I'll coach you on everything. Yep. <laughs> everything. It's, yeah. You know, we have, we have specialties. We do. I, you know, I coach women who uh, are dealing with confidence issues and imposter syndrome. You coach women on weight loss, but at the end of the day, we end up coaching on all of these things that we're talking about. All the things it's, it's you, when you start doing this work, it's what gets you in the door, maybe weight loss, it may be confidence issues, but mm -hmm. at the end of the day, there, there is, it's that unfolding and just having someone just being with that person who wants to be on the journey with you, whatever journey it is and seeing where it goes and staying curious with you and yeah, offering support along the way. And if you haven't joined our Facebook group, the Coaches Cup podcast on Facebook is a fun place to uh, kind of join in the discussion with our other listeners. We will usually pose a question uh, or people will pop in and, and make a comment about this week's episode. And it's just a nice place to have some community uh, of connected folk. Yes. So. so we know who we're talking to. We think we, well, we know, we know you're listening because we see our number. <laughs> we would always love some more five-star reviews. Is it five or four? Five. Five. We five want the five-star. Star. Or we'll <laughs> take it. How many there are. Yeah. <laughs> what the choices are. Yeah. Um, but it is, you know, after doing this for two years and because there are no faces, it is interesting. Like who's listening? Yeah. No, I love How that. That's It's my favorite because you're right. You know, we talk to each other. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but once we finish talking to each other we don't really know where it goes mm -hmm. so, so I was, join that Facebook group I was googling urges on YouTube uh -huh. and you know what popped up what episode four of our podcast managing urges <laughs> I was like oh my god there's me <laughs> well funny you should mention that because next week that's what we're going to be talking about again we're going to be talking about dealing with those urges it's been, if it's been since episode four it probably deserves another a refresh yeah yeah all yeah. right so we'll see you all next week folks bye